through the same sequence. So when I go to this, this arm saddle, he raises his posture to defend. I switch to here. Now, the, the, the main way that the K guard entrance to a backside 50-50 works is through, uh, keep, keep your base here, is through the application of pressure to the back of his knee, okay? So I enter into the position, okay? Through the application of pressure to the back of his knee. That's what allows me to force heel exposure in this situation. Heel exposure is my ability to uh, grasp his heel that will ultimately uh, convert into a heel hook, okay? So if, if I am able to put pressure to the back of his knee in this K-guard situation with this chop, that's what's gonna enable me to get everything going in this move. All right, now, I want you guys to think of pressure to the back of the knee as being a form of back exposure. So if you stand up. Okay, so, um, actually sit down for me. Like in a, in a guard situation, supine. So, uh, supine, supine. Oh. Okay, so in this situation, if I wanted to get behind him, I'm not going to be able to do that because the floor is acting as a barrier, right? It's just as if, right, like, if I don't want anyone to get behind me, I can go here, right? I can put my back to the wall. No one's able to get behind me now. In jujitsu, oftentimes you'll see people, they don't want people, if they want to prevent someone from taking their back, what they'll do is they'll bring their back flat to the mat, okay? And instead, they'll, they'll face me with their chest. It's very similar with pressure to the back of the knee. If he stands up, Right now, there's a very wide amount of space behind the back of his knee that we can exploit, okay? That we can use to enter into and then put pressure to the back of his knee. So what people will oftentimes do is they'll, as they sense pressure to the back of their knee, they'll bring their hips down to the mat. Bring your hips down to the mat. No, you, yeah, all the way, sit down. Yeah, good. So they're sacrificing mobility, but what they're gaining is safety because what they're doing is they're dramatically limiting the range of space behind their knee. Right, when he's standing, he has mobility, but there's an extremely wide amount of space behind his knee that we can exploit and, and, and use to put pressure to the back of his knee. If he's, seated, if, if he's uh, seated, how am I gonna put pressure to the back of his knee? It's a very hard thing to do because there's no space behind his knee. All right, so let's look at this in like very practical terms. All right, so when I enter into the K-guard, from the arm saddle, okay? So I'm right here. He knows, okay, if he knows about this position. Uh, let me just do it one time. Okay. He knows that this is my goal. Mm -hmm. And when I succeed in achieving this position, I can lock pressure at the back of his knee, and I can ultimately move up and expose his heel, right? So he knows that. He knows that if there is space behind the back of his knee, that's the area over here. I can exploit that and, and uh, expose his heel, ultimately, right? So one thing people will do is they'll simply reduce the space by bringing their hips down on that. So here, so he sits back down. What we can do is we can just follow up with him, and now we have a sweep instead, okay? So he's made a choice. He has reduced the space behind the back of his knee, okay? But he's dramatically reduced his mobility and I can then follow up and take a sweep and score points, okay? Now, let's look at that again. He sits back. So, uh, come back now for a second. He knows if he stays low, there's going to be an attack on his arms. So he goes up. Now, because he's gone up, I'm able to gain access to his legs. But now he knows if he stays here, I can start putting pressure to the back of his knee. So he goes to sit back. We just roll back with him. You sit up, gain a hold of his legs, and score your sweep, okay? So again, this is an example of the idea of creating dilemmas, okay? He's shutting off one door, so we're opening up another, okay? Does this make sense, guys? Do you guys need to see this one again, or? So, okay, all right, so really all it is, actually, hold on one second. Really all it is, is guys, you're just like, you're just doing a back roll, okay? And it, it, it's coming because of him. Like, if I'm in a K-guard situation, 
I can't, I'm not really able to generate that kind of momentum to roll backwards. It's the threat of the chop, right? So if I'm here, so let's just start in a, an arm saddle. Right, so if I'm here, he knows, okay, Robert is about to put pressure to the back of my knee. So how can he inhibit that? One way he can do that is literally just by sitting straight back. And as he, as he does that, you just roll back with him, all right? Does that make sense, guys? And once the, once the hook is in, like once you leave in <coughs> pressure to the back of the knee, it's kind of done. You can't sit back from there because you can keep him. No, no, what's interesting is that he can still. It's just different. So that's actually a really good question. So, so uh, let's just enter into the position. So. So if I succeed in gaining a backside 50-50, right? Take a look at where his leg is right now. It's on the bottom side, right? I can't heel hook it right away. So this variation of backside 50-50, it requires me to pass the leg to the top side. As I do that, he can't sit straight back. That's, that's not going to work anymore. He's just gonna run into my leg. But what he can do is he can back step, okay? And what he's done is, at the same time, it's, it's the same fundamental idea. He sacrificed mobility for protection, and the protection involves um, uh, limiting the space underneath his knee, right? So here, there's no pressure to the back of his knee. I still have him in an entanglement. I can still look to attack him in different ways, but there's, there's no pressure to the back of his knee anymore. Whereas before, here, he goes to extend his leg, there's a tremendous amount of pressure to the back of his leg. Whereas uh, now back step, extend this leg. I have no mechanism for bending the leg here, right? Because there's no pressure there. Okay, so that's, that is what people will oftentimes look to do. Yeah, so in this situation, be ready for that. Um, this is not the end of the world. If he does this, again guys, he's still giving you something to work with. What is he giving you? Reduced mobility. Like this is not, stay right there. This is not an athletic position, right? No one plays sports on their butt, except for guard force, <laughs> like me. <laughs> but, like it's not, a, it, it, it's, a, it's a safer position, but it's not an athletic one, is my point, right? So you still have things you can work with. It's just not going to be the same thing, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good, all right. Uh, any other questions, guys? All right, let's get started, one, two, three. All right, guys, now we're gonna look at some matches, uh, which demonstrate some of the principles that I've talked about in the technique portion of this video. Okay, so, First, we're gonna look at the general concept that we're working with here, okay? And then we're gonna to shift to the specific technique that was demonstrated. So when we're looking for leg locks, uh, you wanna think of it ultimately as having, there's like three boxes you have to check off, okay? Don't think of these as three linear um, like steps because it's not really a good way to visualize it because you're not always going to start at point one. Sometimes you might point, start at point three, you know, and then fill in the blanks going backwards, right? Uh, but these are the three check marks you need to <clears throat> you need to have filled out. All right, the basic prerequisites, if you will. All right, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to entangle the leg, then you're going to have to expose the heel, and then you apply braking mechanics. Okay. Now let's first concern ourselves with exposing a heel because that's it's really the the, uh, the most relevant part for this video. All right, so <clears throat> one of the best uh, mechanics we can use to expose a heel when someone is standing over us is pressure to the back of the knee, okay? And there's a specific reason why this mainly works when people are standing over us, right? Let's look at, let's look at a, a match example here where the defensive man is going to inhibit the offensive man's ability to make use of that mechanic. Okay, we're gonna see a very common defensive reaction which chains into this sweep we've been looking at. All right, so here you've got Jeremy Paul Skinner on bottom and Frank Rosenthal on top. Jeremy Paul's got a basic standard Ashigarami. Now, from here, Jeremy Paul switches to a reverse X. Okay, one of the big weaknesses of the reverse X is it's very hard to put the man's hands down to the mat because it's not the most off-balancing guard, right, a regular X guard where the legs would be switched here is a much more off-balancing guard. In addition, Jeremy Paul only has uh, an overwrap grip. He doesn't have a scoop grip. That means that the, the foot is firmly planted on the floor, whereas um, with a scoop grip, he would be able to have this ankle on top of his shoulder. Then obviously, you'd be, you'd be balancing on one leg, so there's a lot less balance there. Um, 
regardless so it's it's not the most off balancing version of an x guard okay so here he's going to look to elevate him see how he looks to elevate frank's hips up in the air to go to uh, a, a, a cross ashi but also guys okay for it's very hard to actually really lift someone's hips here okay especially if their hands are not on the mat so there is some elevation on Jeremy Paul's part that's happening here, but the biggest part really is actually Frank looking to backstep. Frank's looking to backstep to get past this guard, okay? So Frank initiates a backstep. Jeremy Paul does do some lifting action, and then Jeremy Paul reaches through with this hand. He's trying to grab this leg. If you have my Kani Basami instruction, you know that one of the major problems we face when we look to perform a Kani Basami, just as Jeremy Paul is doing so here, is the backstep problem, which is what Frank just did to Jeremy Paul. So because Jeremy Paul does a good job of following up with Frank, Frank is unable to complete the back step, which is to say complete the pass. He, he does complete a back step, but not a back step pass. And Frank is forced to put his hips on the mat. Okay, That's going to become very key to what we're looking at here. There are major defensive advantages to putting your hips on the mat. Okay, When your hips are on the mat, your chest can squarely face your opponent's chest. What that means is that you're going to be able to use uh, your hands, as Frank's doing so here, and you could also use your, your secondary leg very effectively to look to push and free your knee from the knee line, right? That's what Frank did right there. Now, <clears throat> a further advantage is that <clears throat> when your hips are on the mat, you're, there's minimal space behind your knee. I'm not circling Jared and Paul's butt there. I'm circling <laughs> the space underneath Frank's knee. So there's minimal space underneath Frank's knee right here, okay? What that means is it's going to become very difficult to put pressure to the back of Frank's knee. Contrast that with the situation here. There's a lot of space behind Frank's knee, and therefore Jeremy Paul's capacity to potentially put pressure to the back of Frank's knee is very high, right? Frank will inhibit this by bringing his hips to the mat. Now, of course, there's a disadvantage to bring your hips down to the mat as well primarily a, mobil a mobility disadvantage, right? You can't move very fast when your hips are on the mat, okay? Now what we're gonna see here is Frank's gonna get right back up. Let's look at how he's able to get back up because when we look to ultimately capitalize upon this defensive reaction to score a sweep, we wanna know how we can inhibit them from getting right back up, right? So take a look at Frank's left leg. He scissors and heists his hips up. That's very key. If we can stop the scissoring action of this leg, the defensive end will be unable to get up. Okay, There's no way he could do it. Here, and this is a sub-only match, so I don't think Jeremy Paul even gave a shit about being on top, and I don't think Frank gives a shit about it either. It's just, you know, like it's not it's not super key to the dynamic of the match uh, because it's sub-only, right? It's mainly more like movement and uh, trying to uh, entangle a limb or, or get around a guy top position not the most key thing in sub only anyway so one more time and you see here <clears throat> if frank had turned away right like at adcc when all those when lachlan entangled all those big guys what did they do they turned away from him right so their back was facing him that's not that's not good you don't your hands are not free to look to defend you know it's there's, there's a number of other reasons why what they did was not good but that's that's one if your chest is facing the guy you can use your hands, you can use your free leg. It's way, way easier to scoot your hips back and free your knee from their knee line. And there you go, he's out. Now, let's look at an example. This is a match of mine where we're going to see how I made use of pressure to the back of the knee in order to expose a heel. So here, I'm in a bottom cross Ashi and my opponent is defending very intelligently, okay? What he's doing is he's putting the back of his knee to face my hips. Okay, I've talked about this on previous videos. One of the optimal mechanics to force heel exposure in any double seated situation is going to be turning our hips to face the front of our opponent's knee rather than the back. Right here, my opponent is intelligently using the back of his knee to face into my hips. Okay, that, as you see here, denies me heel exposure because his heel is now facing my ribs. In doing so, however, in, in, in attempting to defend, he builds up to his base and there is now space behind the back of his knee, which I could potentially capitalize upon by applying pressure to, okay? So you see here, uh, he's built up to his base, 
right? And now there's, you see the back of his knee, there's a lot of space behind it. Now look what I do. I shift into a backside 50-50. And the key there, the reason why I was able to expose his heel was because of the application of pressure to the back of his knee with this leg, okay? So take a look. First, really it's my right hip facing the ceiling. And what's gonna happen is I shift so that my left hip is facing the ceiling. And what that allows me to do is use this leg to put pressure to the back of his knee and heel exposure is right there, okay? Uh, whereas by contrast to what Frank did, Frank brought his hips out of the mat. You see here, it's much harder to put pressure to the back of the knee. It's very, very difficult. There's very minimal space behind his knee. Whereas here, look at all that space. There's a ton of space. It's like, it goes all the way up to the, uh, the ceiling, right? I'll be able to expose the heel. Now, how can we make use of this mechanic to um, potentially get on top? Well, it's through the generation of dilemma. When you create the threat of one form of offense, a leg lock, oftentimes you'll gain good opportunities to get on top, which is what we're gonna we're gonna see here. So uh, this is Eddie Cummings versus Nathan Orchard at the Portland Sunday Open. This is a great old match. Now Eddie is in a closed guard, and what's gonna happen is he's gonna shift into a key master guard, right into a K guard, right into this K guard sweep. And let's be clear why this K guard sweep is working. There's nothing Eddie's doing which is essentially toppling Nathan over. What's happening is Eddie is essentially he's putting a gun to Nathan's head. He's saying, hey buddy, you're either gonna give me the back of your knee so I can apply pressure to it and I can expose your heel, or you're gonna put your hips to the mat and you're gonna let me get on top. That's the, that's the choice Nathan has put under here, okay? That's why this sweep is working, okay? It's, uh, it goes back to the stuff I talked about previously in the video, all right? Now, let's look at it again. And I'm gonna talk in the future about this guard right here. I think it's a very, very underused guard. It's called a, a key master guard. Very, very, very good guard. Um, connects to another guard that I really, really like. But uh, I'll talk about that more at length in the future. So anyway, you see here, he completes the sweep because what Nathan's trying to do is protect the space of the back of his knee right here. So he brings his hips down to the mat. And now, yeah, he, he did a good job. There's minimal space behind the back of his knee, but he did give up top position. Um, later on in the match, Eddie goes on to outside heel hook him pretty much right after this, but we're not gonna look at that because it's not relevant to the topic. Another really good example, this is very, very similar. This is an old Imanari match. I believe this is uh, Fred Zinpaijou he's going against, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but anyway, so here Imanari is gonna do the exact same technique that Eddie just did, all right? Imanari first is gonna go into, uh, it's not quite a key master guard, it kinda is. Yeah, we can call it a key master guard, because right there, that's sort of like a key master guard. So, um, what he's gonna do is he's gonna essentially shift right into a K guard. See, now he's got the K guard, okay? And now he's gonna bring this leg over the top to threaten pressure to the back of this knee, okay? His opponent does not want that to happen, obviously. Guys, when you get a reputation for being a good leg locker, you're gonna see how often people will do things such as sitting their hips down to the mat because they're, they're more worried about their legs than anything else. When someone's going against Eddie Cummings or Masakazu Imanari, guys, what do you think they're thinking about first and foremost? They're thinking about not getting leg locked, okay? Like, of course they are, right? So these sorts of reactions are gonna become very common. And if we are aware of that and we're ready to capitalize upon it, it's gonna really benefit us. We're gonna be able to get on top with a far greater efficiency. This is one of the best uses of leg locks that people don't do enough as a sweep, using a leg lock to get on top. Very, very underused. Anyway, so take a look at how even our uses that to get on top. Very, very nice. And I should also point out, this is very key, how Imanari blocks the um, uh, blocks the defensive man for being able to stand right back up the way Frank did before, all right? That's key. So again, he's trying, see how Imanari is trying to weave that leg through? And uh, I believe this is Fredson. Fredson does not want that to happen. He's very worried about the leg locks as he you know, reasonably should be. Imanari's terrifying with leg locks. So. Fredson sits down, Imanari says, okay, 
I can't reach this space behind your knee. I'm unable to apply pressure there anymore. You've done a good job stopping that. But what you've done when you made that choice was you gave me the ability to get on top because you brought your hips to the mat and you sacrificed mobility for safety. Now, Imanari gets on top and take a look. It's all in the control of this leg. See how Imanari keeps his hands on that leg? That enables him. That enables him to stop Fredson. I should have let this clip go a little longer, but you, you see my point. See how his hands are right here? He, that enables him to stop Fredson from scissoring. Fredson would want to take this knee, put it on the mat, put this foot on the mat in front, and essentially do like a, a hip heisting technical stand up, okay? Which is what Frank does right here. See here, look, this foot goes behind and he gets up, right? If we want to be able to effectively capitalize upon this defensive reaction of the man bringing his hips in that, we got to be able to stop that. So when Imanari goes, he comes up on top and he holds onto the leg. Very well done. Anyway, guys, uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, if you have any specific things you'd like to see in the future, comment down below. I want you guys to understand why he's sitting down. He's sitting down because he does not want all this space in the back of his knee. There's no space in the back of my knee. But I'm also on my hips and you can follow it up and get it. Yes. Yes. You go into chop and they're doing this. So they're making the chop impossible. What they're doing is they're bringing their hips out of the mat and they're reducing their mobility and get on top. Yeah, you score points. Do sure, yeah, yeah. I'll just start. Let me just start from here. Yeah. So up here. So look, I want this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So go to sit back. Go. Go to sit back. Real. It's just. It's just a thing. Yeah, and we come up. I would hold on to the leg so you can't. You can't get up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, literally just straight back. Yeah. So again, we're here. So like, look, if you don't sit back, and I gain the back side 50 over here. Okay. Now, here. Now look. If you sit back, go sit back. You just go back. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, a lot more. essentially, it's just a fucking back roll and get on top. Okay? Yeah. I got a question. Sure, sure. You probably have used this or thought of it before. So, we start everything. Just keep this one good here first. Switch. Sitting the wrong way. Yeah. Coming through. Oh, so, I have thought about that. I would rather. Issues with it? Yeah, my, my problem with it is like I find when I do that. Watch <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you. So I was actually fucking around with that for a little while. The reason why I don't really do that is so go to sit back a little bit. What I found is like when I do this, like I get like squashed here. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah like it's, it's kind of a weak bottom cross option. So like. If you hit it perfectly, it looks spectacular, and it's like, wow. Wow, that was cool. And Leg Locker's gonna share that, right? <laughs> exactly. But the trick is, is like, too often I find I just get crushed. So I would rather just follow up. Standing up with Yeah, and then watch, well, let me show you something. So what you can do is, so after you, you sit your way back, sit your way. You're in a position where here you could just throw the leg over. Right, yeah. It's so easy. The you old know? Nicky Ryan. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would rather just do that. <laughs> yeah, but it is, it is something I have thought about. But yeah, sometimes, sometimes people that like leg locks, we always want to find the craziest the shit. Craziest stuff. <laughs> sometimes, just getting on top is the right choice. So yeah, take your points. Yeah, yeah, exactly.